In this section, we're going to take what we've learned so far about plotting polar points to create some graphs of polar equations. So let's take a look at some of these polar equations. Like rectangular equations, polar equations involve an input and an output. In a rectangular equation, the input and the output are typically x and y where, when written as a function, we might say y equals f of x. For a polar equation, the input and the output are r and theta, where, when written as a function, we would say r equals f of theta. Now, why use polar equations? Polar equations involve uh, very simple equations, as you'll see here in a minute, that produce some really amazing results. And those results oftentimes look like everyday things around you. For example, the polar equation of r equals a times the sine or cosine of the quantity n times theta is called a rose curve. And it's called a rose curve because it sort of looks like a rose, or in this case, a flower. If the n value is odd, then there are n petals. If the n value is even, then there are two n petals. And of course, a cannot equal zero. We'll look at some examples of this in a minute. Another example of a polar equation is something called a lemniscate. And a lemniscate looks, you can see in this image, looks like a sound wave that almost looks like the infinity symbol. Now, Graphing that with a polar equation, the equation is r squared equals a squared times either the sine or the cosine of the quantity 2 times theta, again where a cannot equal 0. And finally, we have the graph of the polar equation that's called a limason. And a limason, um, the equation for that is a uh, r equals a plus or minus b times the sine or cosine of theta, where a does not equal zero. Now, the different types of limason, there's one called an inner loop, and you can see that inner loop on the inside. There's one called a cardioid that looks like a heart. That's why it's called the cardioid. You know, think of cardiology as a heart doctor. Um, or there's one called a dimpled limason. And you can see in this picture of the apple that it sort of looks like maybe a cardioid uh, that's reflected from this picture. Now let's look at an example where we are asked to graph a polar equation. Identify the shape of the polar equation, r equals three times the sine of the quantity two theta, and then graph the polar equation. So using the equations that we've learned about rose curves, lemniscates, and limassons, which one of these seems to match the form that we're given of r equals three times the sine of two theta? I think that this looks like a rose curve because we have an a value being multiplied by the sine of the quantity n times theta, and that appears to be what we have here um, with three times the sine of two theta. Now, it appears that our n value is two, and because two is an even number, I'm gonna expect two times n petals. So two times n petals, which will give me four petals, right? So I believe that this is a rose curve, a rose curve, but we will see here in just a minute. All right, so let's now produce, um, let's look at a graph. Let's see how we might graph this. So what we wanna do to graph it is we wanna just come up with a table of values. And then as we come up with that table of values, we will plot those points. All right, so I've created a little polar graph here for us. Hopefully that helps. So we're gonna start, let's just start with zero um, and we're in radians. So if I input zero radians into this equation for r, r is gonna equal whatever three times the sine of two times zero is. And let's see, uh, two times zero is zero. 
and the sine of zero is zero, so this becomes three times zero, which is zero. So our very first ordered pair is the ordered pair zero, zero, right at the origin or the pole. All right, now my next theta, I could pick anything I want. <clears throat> the closer, the closer the values are for theta, the more precision I'm gonna get with my graph. So I'm gonna choose pi over six. If I were to pick, say, pi over 4 or pi over 3, they're spread out more, and I may not be able to see the shape quite as well. All right, so this is going to be 3 times the sine of 2 times pi over 6. Now, that's the same thing as 3 times the sine of 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. And you might want to pause the video here and figure out what is the sine of pi over 3. But assuming that you have some of these things easily memorized, um, that's going to be uh, 3 times the square root of 3 over 2. And because I want to plot this, I'm going to go ahead and put that into my calculator. And when I put 3 times the square root of 3 over 2 into my calculator, I got approximately 2.6. So I'm going to have a radius of 2.6 and I'm going to have a theta of pi over 6. So let's graph that and I'll pick a different color maybe. Um, so let me put my point at the origin or the pole in blue. And then I'm going to go to pi over 6 and I'm going to go out to a radius of, let's see, 1 and 2 and there's three, so 2.6 is maybe right there. Okay, let's do another point. So one pi over six, let's try two pi over six. Two pi over six is gonna be pi over three. So I'm gonna have three times the sine of two times pi over three. And go ahead and pause the video on that and figure out what that should be. Um, I came up with 3, let's see, the sine of 2 pi over 3, the sine of 2 pi over 3 is also square root of 3 over 2, so same output of about 2.6. Now you might think, oh, it's going to be the same point, but remember, we are now at a theta of pi over 3. So going to pi over 3, going to pi over 3 right here, I was at pi over 6, now I'm at pi over 3. Um, I'm going to also go out 1 and 2 and just a little bit past that, so maybe right there. And then let's keep going. I think we should be seeing a pattern here. 3 pi over 6, that's going to be pi over 2. So 3 times the sine of 2 times pi over 2 which is going to be, let's see, 2 times pi over 2 is just pi, and the sine of pi is 0. So 3 times 0 is 0. So I think what has happened is we are back to the pole. So let me just graph, maybe connect some points here. We started at the pole. We went to this point, 2.6 comma pi over 6, and then we came back around and we ended up back at the pole. That is our first petal. And because we said that we thought this would have four petals, I think you might be able to see the pattern that is probably going to happen. I'm guessing that there's going to be a petal in each quadrant, but let's just do a few more of these. All right, so we did um, 3 pi over 6 last. Let's do 4 pi over 6. 4 pi over 6 is 2 pi over 3, isn't it? So 3 times the sine of 2 times 2 pi over 3 is equal to 3 times the sine of 4 pi over 3. And let's see, 4 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant, and so that's going to be a negative square root of 3 over 2. So I have negative 2.6. So negative 2.6 comma... 2 pi over 3. Let's just see what that looks like. So 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant, but with that negative radius, I have to travel across it to 5 pi over 3. So let's see, there's going to be 1 and 2, and I'm going to be about right there. Okay. All right, let's keep going. 
So 5 pi over 6, so 3 times the sine of 2 times 5 pi over 6. Uh, 2 times 5 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 3, and the sine of 5 pi over 3 is also negative square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to have negative 2.6 comma 5 pi over 6. So again, we are 5 pi over 6 is in the second quadrant, but with that negative radius, we have to go across to 11 pi over 6, and that's going to put me about right there. And I feel as though I know what's going to happen with the next point, but let's just see here. 6 pi over 6 is equal to pi, so 3 times the sine of 2 times pi. Uh, the sine of 2 pi is 0, so we are back at, uh, let's see here, 0 comma pi. So if I'm at a radius of pi, but or excuse me, if I'm at a theta of pi and a radius of zero, I'm just back at the pole, aren't I? So let's plot this out. So from that first quadrant petal, we now created a petal in the, looks like the fourth quadrant, okay? So I'm guessing if we keep going, do you think I'm going to end up in the, the next one's going to be in the first quadrant or is it, or excuse me, the second quadrant or the third quadrant? Well, let's maybe just do one more to see where this thing's going to go. So three times the sine of two times seven pi over six is three times the sine of, let's see, two times seven pi over six would be seven pi over three and 7 pi over 3 is one whole rotation around and then ends me up coterminal with pi over 3. So this should be square root of 3 over 2. So 2.6 comma 7 pi over 6. All right, so 7 pi over 6, where's that? That is in the third quadrant, and I'm going to be at a radius of 1 and 2 and 2.6 so it's a positive radius so I'm staying in that third quadrant all right I'm gonna let you fill out the rest of this chart now that I know that that point is in the third quadrant I feel as though I can probably guess that that third petal is in the third quadrant and the fourth petal would be in the second quadrant So now let's take a look at how we might graph that same polar equation, but using technology. We're lucky that we have technology um, because graphing by hand was a lot of work, wasn't it? So I want to show you how you might do that with Desmos and then also show you how you might do that with a handheld graphing calculator. So let's start with Desmos. And so you're going to go to the normal place in Desmos, but you're going to go up to the wrench and you're going to click that to a grid that's a polar grid. And of course, make sure that you're in radians. Once you've changed it to the polar graph, you now have the ability to graph R equals and also have things like theta. Now you can type the word theta or you can go to the keyboard and find the theta. And look how fast that was. All that work we did before is now so simple. And if I change the theta, um, I can see like if I go from 0 to pi over 6, I see that first movement. Um, I, can, I can step by step see how we created that first pedal. And then the second pedal and the third and the fourth pedal. All right, so that's pretty nice, isn't it? Now, if I go to the graphing calculator, a little bit more work, you're going to go to mode and you're going to change it, make sure you're in radian, and then go down to where it says function and you're going to change to polar. All right, now, once you change it to polar, now when you go to y equals, it's actually r equals. So you're going to type in 3 times the sine of 2, and the theta is in the same position as where the x was before. And when we graph it, there is the picture. I'm going to go to zoom square. That's going to set that rectangular window into a square window. And maybe I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can see it closer. So that looks pretty nice. 
if I use the trace feature, I can actually see the path of that petal being formed. So we see the first petal, the second petal in the fourth quadrant, the third petal, um, where did that end up? The third petal, petal ended up in the third quadrant and making my way all the way around to finish out that rose curve. The other thing that I can do is I can take a look at a table of values. And so I go to table set and I'm gonna change the, that triangle means the change in the table. I'm gonna change that to pi over six because that's what we did. Pi over six is approximately 0 0.52. And now if I use the table, I can jump from, remember I said it was like 2.6 and you can see that 2.6 for the, the radius and you can track that all the way down um, to two pi. And then after that, it would just repeat itself. So that is how you would graph with technology. Uh, we also know how to graph by hand, but really all that I'm wanting you to do is be responsible for graphing using technology. So make sure that you can do that.